Hello again, Dr. Evan here. Uh, on this video today, we're going to talk about degenerative changes of the cervical spine on an MRI. Uh, I've previously done a video on the lumbar spine, and I know a lot of you out there probably have neck pain also, uh, so we're going to talk about that today. Similarly to the lumbar spine, there are a few major things that I'll go through. Um, that cause degenerative change and some issues with the cervical spine. A lot of it has to do with the movement of our neck. Um, it can move in all different sorts of ways that our lower back and our mid back cannot uh, just due to the lack of ribs and things like that. So there's degenerative disc disease. There's some joint disease between the little facet joints um, and you can also get disc herniations uh, in the neck just like in the lumbar spine. So I have a, a little bit of a demonstration here to show you a uh, normal MRI and uh, an abnormal one, and we'll walk through that together. And if you think the video is helpful, which I hope you do, please like the video and subscribe. And uh, as always, feel free to comment uh, below. And if you would like to see us make a certain type of video, please feel free to make a suggestion and, and we're happy to do that. Okay, so let's go over degenerative changes of the cervical spine on an MRI. On the left side of the screen here, I have a normal cervical spine MRI. On the right side, I just want to show where we're looking. So this is a model showing a, a woman's neck. So the cervical spine is basically the spine that is in the neck that goes down to the level of the shoulders. At the level of the shoulders, it becomes the thoracic spine. So we're looking from the side, a more sagittal view here like this. Um, I'm also going to show at times the axial or um, cross-sectional view. What that means is that when a patient's laying down on their back, we're looking at it from this way, where this is the top and this is the right side. And uh, we can move up and down the spine this way as well. I have a 3D model here of a total spine, and I just want to show the difference between three areas. Uh, there is another video on the lumbar spine, um, which is down here, but uh, for this video we're going to focus on the cervical spine, so this is the spine and the neck as I mentioned, and you can see these seven vertebral bodies, so there's one right here, it's kind of a ring that's called C1, you can see that here on the MRI right here, and that rings around this one, which is C2, which is this one right here, three, four, five, six, seven, so there's seven cervical vertebral bodies. You can see they look different than these ones. These are thoracic for 12, those have ribs attached to them, and then lumbar five, those do not have ribs. So we're gonna focus on the cervical spine here. And there are a few things that I wanna point out when we talk about degenerative disease. So the first thing is there, you see these spaces right here, these are discs, intervertebral discs. You can see them here in the blue. Um, so these are the cushions that are between the vertebral bodies. So when we move, these absorb the force of our movement. The cervical spine is really good at moving front and back, so flexing and extending, but also turning our head side to side. So the other areas of the spine do not rotate as much as the cervical spine does. That's one of the reasons why this is a ring here, because we need to turn our heads uh, in, a, in more rotation than we do the rest of our body. So uh, besides these um, discs here that can have some degenerative changes to them, there are two sets of joints in the cervical spine. So the first are what are called the facet joints. You can see back here uh, these interlocking pieces of bone. So each level has these. These are the facet joints. You can see them actually here on the side um, at every level on the MRI and uh, these are the joints, they kind of lock the spine together, but they will move a little bit when we move our head, so over time they can form arthritis, um, and that's called facet arthropathy or facet hypertrophy. Um, the other joint is a little bit uh, more difficult to see, and it's only in the cervical spine, but actually between each vertebral body on the side is what's called the uncovertebral joints. This model actually doesn't show them that well, um, but basically what they are is, I can show in this axial view, um, you can see right here, um, this is a vertebral body and you can see these black lines right here. Uh, those are those joints, they kind of interlock the vertebral bodies here in the front. Um, and again, they're not really well shown on this 3D model, but it, they're, they're kind of a loosely based joint and that's called uncovertebral. It's only in the cervical spine, but those can go through changes of 
degeneration as well. Okay, so now I have a cervical spine that has some degenerative changes, so I'm going to point out some of those things. So the first thing that we do when we look at the cervical spine is we look at the alignment. So it should be um, relatively uh, straight or slightly curved actually this way in the cervical spine. Um, so this one is kind of curved the other way. We see that a lot in the MRI scanner because patients are laying in positions that they aren't normally in. Uh, more flat, for example. So the normal curvature actually is slightly like this, um, but these are all well aligned. There's none slipped forward or backward. That's called spondylolisthesis. They're all kind of in line here. There's ligaments, the posterior longitudinal ligament back here and the anterior longitudinal ligament here that keep these well aligned. You can see on this example over here, um, they're lined up pretty well. This one is slightly posterior to this one. Uh, same with this one, slightly posterior. So there's just a little bit of slippage there and that can happen with degenerative changes. Uh, so that's one of the things that happens as we age in our cervical spine. The second thing is these discs, like I, like I mentioned before, they're actually full of a little bit of uh, water and over time that water will desiccate or dry out. You can see there's some bright signal in there. And then here they look more black these have lost the, the water basically, so you can see some normal ones down here. And then over time, they'll actually narrow down and uh, sometimes to the point where these two bones will actually touch each other and that would be severe. This is more of a mild uh, degenerative disc disease. The other thing that happens to the discs is when they're pushed backwards, um, they can actually push out in any direction, but a lot of times they go backward and you can see that they're kind of pushed out like this. So in this one, there, there's none of them pushed out backwards into the, this is the spinal canal. So you can see these levels, there's a little bit of disc pushed back. In the cervical spine, these tend to be pushed back with some bone pieces. So you can see this little kind of edge of bone here. Um, so most people call those disc osteophyte complexes. So if you see that term, that's what that means. That basically means this little piece of bone is an osteophyte. And when the disc pushes back, um, it forms a disc osteophyte complex, and that's kind of unique to the cervical spine. It doesn't happen as frequently in the lumbar or thoracic spine, usually just a disc bulge. So that's how the discs um, will age over time. They'll, they'll lose water, and then they'll get pushed um, and narrowed um, over time. As far as the facet joints go, let me show the axial view. So this is the axial view, and what we're looking at again is somebody laying down where this is the front or the top, and this is the right side. I'm actually gonna start at that level where that ring vertebral body is, the C1 ring, and this is that C2 um, vertebral body. Uh, it's basically this little spot right here. And I'm gonna start at the top and go down. So as I go down, you can see we get to the first joints here. These are the facet joints here and here. So if I go down here on this one, um, they look basically the same. So over time though, they can get arthritis in them. So you can see if you go down a little bit more, they start to get a little more irregular looking. These are all pretty much mild, um, but over time they can get big and bulky and form a bunch of osteophytes or bone pieces these ones down here a little bit lower you can see they're a little more jagged and irregular as compared to the normal one here where the lines are pretty straight um, so that's facet arthropathy or facet hypertrophy the reason that's important is if these bone pieces stick upward these are the neuroframina where the nerves can come out and it will narrow these spaces here and uh, the bone pieces will cause uh, compression upon the nerves that go out either side and the other thing is, you can see when I go to this level, for example, this is one of those levels where the disc was coming back. So that's that disc osteophyte complex. You can see on the normal one, we don't have that at any level. This is relatively flat. It doesn't affect the um, area where the spinal cord is. And this one, it does. You can see there's some narrowing here. This is that disc. And then it also narrows these neuroframina here. So that's the problem with aging of our spine is that this disc will come back like this, these joints will come forward like this, and it will narrow these, and that's how the nerve roots get uh, pressed upon, and that's how you get symptoms of numbness, burning, tingling, etc. 
And if it gets really bad, um, then actually the cord itself can be narrowed. So the spinal canal can be narrowed and uh, that can cause problems too. Um, and then lastly, those uncovertebral joints I was talking about before, you can see they're nice and straight here. Um, on this one, there's a normal level here. As we go down a little bit more again, you can see they will become a little more jagged on the side here, and those can produce some bone pieces out this way as well, and sometimes backward, and just, again, add to that process of narrowing. So the arthritis in and of itself um, may or may not cause any problem. It's really whether they're gonna narrow these neuroframina or narrow the spinal canal. So just to show, the spinal canal is way open here. Um, this is the cord. The white stuff is the cerebrospinal fluid. And you can see on this one, it's starting to get narrowed a little bit. And you can imagine if there was a big disc, it's gonna really narrow it. And if it's pushing on the cord, then that can cause symptoms. And then again, the neuroframina can get narrowed by the process of either uncovertebral arthropathy, um, a disc pushing backward like this, or these facet joints hypertrophying over time. So you'll get narrowing here, narrowing here, um, or narrowing here. Um, so those are the major processes of degeneration of the cervical spine. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'm always happy to answer or provide any other videos that may help you.